GMS me in hook. It'll be taking over your random encounter Anon. Go back to IG. Rewind to us figuring out it's a group of NPC legion recruits. We shake off the hook bullshit and roll for sneak. Vulp rolls a critical success so all of us move in closer to the powder gangers. We're in earshot now and we can hear them interrogating the recruits. We know some legion boys attacked our guys at the farm. Tell us where the fuck they are and I'll tell Jerry not to rape any of you before we put dynamite in your ass. Recruits are young, like 15-18 young. Vulps is gritting his teeth and Conrad's trigger finger is itching. Jerry is a fat black guy. I turn and whisper to the boys. What the fuck are we gonna do? Conrad doesn't even wait to answer. I say we fucking kill them all. I look to Vulp, he shrugs then nods to me. I look to Richardson then point to the one farthest away from us. Fuck him up Richardson. GM takes control of Richardson. The young death claw slowly nods and bares his teeth in what can only be described as a strange yet humble smile that would terrify anyone it was meant to kill. My face when Richardson is sapient. I take out the ranger's hunting rifle and aim directly at Jerry. Literally can't make this up. Conrad pushed my gun towards another guy and says. I want the nigger. Okay guess you got the dindo dot vault tech. Aim at the lead powder ganger and roll for a headshot. Fucking critical success. Blow his brains all over the recruits while Richardson Banzai charges past the powder gangers and rams the one farthest from us. The hardest shot to make. Conrad jumped from the shot and absolutely just starts unloading his RCW into the black guy. Vulp takes this opportunity to throw a spear at one of the powder gangers. He misses. Our two NPCs start taking pot shots at the last three guys who've began running away. Richardson. Big baby boy Richardson turns with a mouthful of guts. Kill. My character points at the three running powder gangers. More meat for meat beast. Web. Richardson breaks out into a sprint and me, Conrad, and Vulp watch as he catches them one by one and takes chunks out of them. I sent it weird that we let Richardson eat people? I sent that cannibalism? Conrad turns and gives him a serious look. ITD be weird if he was human, Vulp, a man's gotta eat. After we call over the egos and start going through the powder gangers shit we realize there's still 5 tied up legion recruits. Lightbulb. Vulp, what should we do with these guys? Yeah legion, it's your call. I hit him up with a fat PM. None of them dared speak of our brothers in arms location so none of them should be executed. Yet they still allowed themselves to be captured. Caesar would see that they sullied his own name and needed to redeem themselves. What do you have in mind, Conrad? We must see to it that they do something that would honor Caesar, they will come with us and from now on shall wear the emblem of the Enclave. People have yet to see the Legion as anything more than monsters, the Enclave may pose as a hero to the downtrodden, Vulp. One by one we uncut their ropes and I handed out armbands to them. All of you, discard your armor and anything that could signify your service of Caesar, Vulp. Here is where I got chills going down my spine. I started reading through the Ook chat and found something very entertaining. So why do you think they've just been traveling around like this? I thought the Enclave would be more hostile. Not sure, but he's been avoiding RP with us and just sticks with the racist and the Legion guy. Skip ahead to after my character starts handing out armbands to the Legion teens. What do you think he's up to, Boss Edgelord? He's building an army, the boss scribe that ran off to find help. I was scaring these fucking faggots, I had to be. Because they had put aside their monologuing and started traveling together. NCR and boss faggots broke character and began chasing down the evil xenophobic enclave fascists. Yet I was building an army, and it wasn't even done growing, not even fucking close. We finished getting the recruits ready for travel and decided to hit the road before the edgelords had time to pick up on our trail. From time to time a mod would throw a sneaky ant or rad scorpion our way but with our army it didn't even do the slightest damage to us. As we traveled south on the road we came across a shitty little gas station inhabited by jackholes. They spotted us long before we spotted them, so they booked it up into the mountains where they had the advantage. Vulp eventually figured out where they had run off to and he didn't like the spot we'd have to go to so we'd be able to get our hands on them. Thieve put themselves on top of a trailer, one of them have a long range rifle. He can't hit us from here but if we get close he'll take pot shots at us. What if we don't get closer, what if we get further away? Vulp is confused because Legion bro has no concept of strategy. They ran off as soon as they saw us, there's almost 20 of us now. Do you really think they'd remember every single egg or all of the recruits? They spotted us and ran, 
Why don't we act like we're leaving? We could leave one of the egos, two of the recruits and Conrad. They see us leaving and don't think twice about coming down from their mountain. Conrad had been taking a shit while we kept going up the road, he had a thing for stopping to use it right before we got close to buildings. I don't know something about his character not liking how unhygienic they were. Point is that he wasn't spotted by the jackals like the rest of us. Sort of makes sense but what are we gonna do when they come down from the mountain? I'll have the egg or transmit a message to me when the jackals enter the station. Hide for as long as possible while we come back to ambush them. What if we can't hide? Wing it or whatever, just don't get shot. Gotcha. Conrad, one of the less fucked up egos, and two of the legion kids stayed in the gas station while the rest of us grouped together and made sure the jackals saw us leaving. When we're about a mile down the road I get a ding from my pip boy. Alright that's the signal, let's head back as fast as posse. Fucking more gunshots start popping off than fireworks on the 4th. God damn it, we gotta move. Me, Vulp, the farmers, and the recruits break out into a full sprint. It was just a jog for Richardson. It took us 8 in game minutes to get to the gas station, and we were all fucking exhausted. We rounded the corner of the place and faced the gas pumps. The egg or we left got one of its legs chopped off and was trying to get on its feet. One of the recruits got stabbed in the gut, another had gotten knocked out. And Conrad? Conrad was between two gas pumps kicking the ever-living shit out of two jackals, four more laying around him dead or nearly there. I watch in awe as Conrad ducks a haymaker, parries a jab, and uppercuts one guy so hard he backpedals for a few feet until he falls flat on his back. Conrad turns to the last guy and catches a wicked full strength punch to the jaw. Shrugs it off with a fucking grin, a grin. I go to approach and I just get met with a resounding. Fuck off. He's mine. Shit nigger ok. The jackal and Conrad circle for a few seconds until the jackal lunges at Conrad. Oh shit dot avi. Conrad lets the guy put his hands on his shoulders then, like a fucking ninja move, breaks the guy's grip and uses all of his weight to double open palm punch this guy in the chest. Imagine a football guard or tackle hitting a tall lanky linebacker with purely his arm muscle and body weight. Guy falls straight down like a stick, gasping for air. Conrad straddles him and wraps his wide hands around the guy's neck. I thought he was gonna choke him to death, nope. Conrad lifts up with his entire body and drops, putting all his weight in his hands. Breaks the jackal's windpipe and releases his grip. Conrad falls on his back taking in huge gulps of air. Obviously exhausted from fighting off a bunch of crazy chem heads with his bare hands. I give Conrad a minute to rest while Vulp tends to the recruit. He's fine. Conrad. What the fuck happened? Winged it. Conrad closes his eyes and tries slowing down his breathing. My face w I brought the most dangerous man in the wasteland to a gunfight. My face when they brought guns to a fist fight. My face when he's this timeline's version of Chuck Norris. After we gathered up the living jackals we start offing them one by one until I get met by Conrad. One of them is a new player. I check the post logs and it turns out that it wasn't a mod with the jackals after all. It was a new player who was playing as a jackal, the fucking jackal sniper. Guy pretty much was using the gas station as an outpost to raid caravans and attack travelers. Decently edgy character page but the kid still tried fucking with us. We get to him eventually and he starts begging for his life. Please don't kill me I'll do anything you want me to. I be your fucking slave just don't kill me. Kid asks for a speech roll. PFFFT yes or faggot. He fucking rolls a critical success. Well I guess you're too young to kill, but you're still gonna pay fucking big time for fucking with us. Vulp and Conrad and cacking at me in the PMs. Basically the kid lost all of his NPC companions so he wanted to join up with us for a while. Kid has no clue that we are the target of every edgelord in this roleplay. PM the kid and tell him this. Response is gold. Either I get beaten to death by an Aryan today or get shot by a ranger tomorrow. It'll take my chances. After we untie the kid and give him back his rifle we see to it that the recruit and the Egor are fixed up enough for travel. So Conrad, what happened? As soon as the message went through we started hearing gunshots. Jackal kid pipes in. We just call him Jackal BTW. He fucking started shooting us with his laser gun. When he ran out of ammo he rushed us with a big fucking hammer. Oh what the fuck Conrad, where'd you get a hammer? Or a long silence. I found it in the garage. Did you drop it or something? Why would you fight a bunch of guys barehanded if you had a hammer? Jackal spouts are full pissy. 
because when he got to around his third swing he hit one of the pumps and broke it. Look around at the pumps. Conrad had been swinging a big sledgehammer at the guys. When he broke it he didn't break the handle or simply knock the head loose. He shattered the metal head of the sledgehammer. How the fuck do you even do that Conrad? Long pause. Adrenaline? My face when Conrad is Thor. After Jack Hall came on board we started talking a lot in PMs. Now that we were a group of 4 players, and I had been actively recruiting, people were offering all over the orc. If we were gonna plan out some strategies we couldn't talk about it between our characters and game. The edgelords were obviously fine with metagaming and it made no difference to them whether or not we weren't really bad guys. After a 2 in real life day deliberation we decided that if we could stand a chance against the lynch mob and their NPC compatriots we would have to call in the cavalry. We would have to call in the enclave. We p met the GM and he was fine with it if we reasonably found a way to communicate with the nearest enclave base. For that we would have to find a radio station, commandeer it, and initiate a broadcast to the enclave. It doesn't sound too hard but there are only a few different radio stations in the Mojave. The most prominent being the one at the strip. But that was a no-go from the get-go. There were enough NCR NPCs to fuck us back into our mom's wombs. Also I was positive that a few boss fags were up there monologuing with the Silver Rush NPCs. The only other high-powered radio station in the Mojave was the Black Mountain radio station. Both Vulp and Jack all confirmed that the station had been taken over by a group of super mutants. But Jack all told us about the trailer he and his fellow raiders had used at an emergency outpost. Apparently it had been some sort of weird ham radio setup made to listen in on and transmit messages at long distances. You fucking what mate dot kaleo Theneca variety. I decide to say fuck it and up head up there. We called it lone wolf radio, kinda has that weird aura to it. Conrad has no chill. Were you high when you made up that stupid aura shit? We hike up to the trailer and find a truly weird setup. Three high powered radio beacons, four ham radios, and more broken hand radios than time Richardson spends picking people out of his teeth. People are chewy. What in the fuck were you chem heads doing up here? Jack all just rubs his neck. You killed the guy who was up here didn't you? Conrad doesn't even wait to punch the shit out of the kid. At this point we began role playing that Jack all was just a lost kid who needed guidance, like an antisocial little brother you have to beat faggot out of. This equipment is in really good condition but these beacons aren't really for sending messages as much as they are for receiving long distance transmissions. Conrad steps forward and eyes the shit like he knows what it is. Maybe it belonged to a Chinese spy. Vulp is just as confused as Conrad at this point because he's outside seeing what he can do to make the generator explode. Succeed he does not. I don't think it was the Chinese Conrad. It was probably an NCR or Brotherhood of Steel listening post. I've seen a few before. Yet never with this much pristine shit. We go back and forth about how the boss rarely had any sort of ability to face the NCR in open combat so they reverted to weak subversion tactics such as counterintelligence listening posts. Such as this one. Eventually I decide I'll try seeing what I can do with the setup, see if I can get any type of long range signal out. Roll for science. Should be easy. Fucking critical fail. After a few presses of buttons and taps on the PTT button the entire ham radio setup begins shorting out. Roll for speed. Roll a 16. Disconnect the ham radios from the radio beacons. Inspect the ham radios. Fear all fucking ruined. Check the beacons. One is damaged but the other two are fine. God fucking damn it. Freak out for a few minutes, smash the hell out of the ham radios and even start shooting them. Eventually give them to the legion recruits so they can make spearheads out of the metal. So what are we gonna do now? I am guessing we can't use this stuff. We would have to get some more ham radios, I see now why it all shorted out. The ham radios had such little room for the beacons relay power on their circuit boards that the person who set this up had to have more than one ham radio and countless shitty radios he could burn, through, per broadcast or relay. We stand around talking shit about the shitty radio setup until it hits me that I don't need a ham radio for the relay or broadcast. I just needed something with enough processing power to make sure the output of the beacons won't overload the input of the radio. By enclave standards I would only need a few standards plus, by wasteland standards I would need a fucking gigantic supercomputer. Light bulb. Sentry bots had military grade plus, if I could find one or two of them I could use them to temporarily begin and end the broadcast before shorting them, and the radios, out. 
Of course this was all bullshit I was making up for the roleplay so I would have a reason to go down to Prim and use EDE as the processing machine for the radio setup. After all EDEs were made for infiltration and propaganda. Meaning they could receive and send radio signals of what they hear in the wasteland. An enclave made robot had more than enough processing power to do what I needed it to. I've decided we need to head towards the nearest town and start looking for military grade circuit boards. They'll have the hardware I need to process the beacon's information without absolutely frying our equipment. My character pauses to look at Vulp. Where's the nearest town that might have what we're looking for? Vulp walks over and starts looking over my Pip-Boy's map when he accidentally hits the volume on its radio. Folks, let me put my newsman Fedora here, because boy do I got a crazy story for you. I've gotten witness reports of enclave soldiers in a little Ole town called Bonnie Springs. The GM had stepped into our little navigation roleplay with a Mojave-wide message about us. He was letting all the people know I see info so they wouldn't be metagaming if they knew about us. Apparently in the town's greatest hour of need these soldiers fortified it, and fended off an army of Oa Vipers. We've all heard stories about these guys folks. In character me and the boys are fuck layering at this point. Richardson is scratching his ass. If you don't know about the Enclave, they claim to be the last remnants of the United States government. For a long time they kept to themselves and when they came out, they weren't so friendly. But folks you heard it from me first, and as surprised as I am, it seems what I was told is factual. The Enclave is for a fact, in the Mojave. Whether or not this was a single act of kindness or the Enclave has turned a new leaf has yet to be discovered. If I hear anything, it'll be telling you first, let's get back to the records. This next song is from me, to you. Well shit the whole Mojave knew we were here and knew where to start looking for us. Now they didn't have to meta game. Peter they are gonna start coming after us with everything they've got, an army, what are we gonna do? We will have to outsmart the bastards at every turn, and build an army of our own. I turned to the NPCS and pretty much did the whole year the beginning of something great speech. In reality I knew most of them would die, if not all of them. Staying in the mountains was a no-a-go if we were going to set up some sort of fortification, and at the moment we had no strategy of outplaying the lynch mob. So our goals went like this. Recruit wastelanders. Get somewhere with the enough walls to fend off a lynch mob attack, even for just a little while. Get the EDE from Prim and activate the radio beacons. Get a message to the enclave. It took a few hours to rig up the beacons on wheels, but once we did the egos started pulling the 200 pounds of equipment while we made our way down to Prim. When we arrived, a day later, we found that Prim was occupied by two groups. Outside the town was a platoon of disgruntled NCR troopers. In the town were a branch off group of powder gangers. All the fucking players in this roleplay neglected to do the first thing you're supposed to do when you leave Good Springs, fucking lazy faggots. Me. Conrad, and Jack all are going into Prim while we leave Vulp with the troops and Richardson. We make our way down the road until we come across a few troopers on duty. Where are you boys headed from? Oh we just came south of Good Springs. You heard anything about them enclave? Nope.png. Alright well if you hear anything, let us know. The plan was to go and talk to the man in charge, persuade him into attacking the powder gangers in town. If the NCR guys died the powder gangers would be extremely weakened. If the powder gangers died the NCR would be extremely weakened. Sounds like a good deal right? Shit did not go as planned. As soon as we got to the middle of the NCR camp we got surrounded by MPS. I am thinking to myself that this is some fat mod bullshit. Then I realize something that I had forgotten. Through all of this Conrad has worn the same fucking bright blue vault 14 volt suit. Fuck me. Freeze enclave scum. One of the MPs puts a baton in my face, obviously trying to intimidate me. Mods are within their rights, because this legitimately isn't metagaming, but their plan is to trap us here and wait for the players to arrive and kill us. They didn't really think it through too well. Listen, we didn't come here to start a fight, we just won. Mods were not here to negotiate, they wanted blood for us shitting on their edge fest. MP in front of me takes a swing at my head with a baton. About to roll for a speed check when Conrad rolls for speed and strength check. He fucking crits, both. Catches the baton mid-swing. MP's face when he just picked a fight with Arian Chuck Norris. Conrad throws a lightning fast right cross, MP is out cold. Me and Jack all roll our combat rolls. 16 and 12. We won't slow down Conrad, that's all that matters. 
Before Conrad can turn to another MP he gets a glancing left jab that touches his cheek and slips past him. Initiate Operation Conrad. Grognak. Conrad firmly grips the MP's wrist with his left hand. Slams his right hand up under the MP's armpit with a deadly iron grip. Lifts the MP in the air and with a loud thud slams him face first in the dirt. Jackal is getting his ass kicked by two guys. I am dipping, dodging, and jabbing one guy. Conrad releases the MP he face planted. Hits a full out sprint towards Jackal. Jackal is pinned by one MP while the other is beating him with a baton. MP with the baton turns just in time to see Conrad's huge muscular shoulders slam into his gut. The MP was gasping for air after getting speared, but Conrad jumped to his feet without hesitation and kicked him in the face. When he turned to Jackal, the MP that had him pinned was now standing up and staring at Conrad. You want some big guy? I heard them stories about your racist ass. Mod made this MP a black guy. Too easy for Conrad. Yenth they're all true. Ill carpet my vault with your black skin. MP gets ready to attack when out of nowhere Jackal drop kicks the guy in the back. Conrad uses the kinetic energy of the guy moving forward to hit him with a full power haymaker. All that force going forward goes backward in an instant. MP ends up on his back. Conrad looks down at him. Eyes wide open and mouth gawking. Jackal wipes the blood off his face. You killed him with a punch. I finally get done fighting my guy. He just eventually takes his beating. I walk over and put my hand on Conrad's shoulder. You fucking clotheslined him with your fist. That's one for the holotapes. Did I mention that Jackal is pretty much the physical default version of a 120 pound sore boy? Just has enough drugs in his system that make him feel pretty much nothing and puts the cartel to shame. After we regained our strength after the fight we realized that we're still in the NCR camp. It was a miracle that the troopers hadn't rushed us. We attributed this to the soldiers being too busy watching Prim or making sure no one else entered the camp. Getting out of their camp isn't really an option. We'll have to signal Vulp that we need help then flank the soldiers wherever Vulp begins his assault from. We drag the knocked out and dead MPs away from the middle of the camp and put them into a latrine ditch. Yeah we did that. Conrad kicks the dead MP into the ditch then turns to me. So how are we supposed to signal Vulp? I put down my bag and start looking through it. Realize that I fucking left the flare gun with Vulp. I was about to say we could use the flare gun, but it's not in my backpack. Do either of you have any ideas? Jackal does a little daydreaming while Conrad starts looking around for anything, then he gets a light bulb. What about my gun? What about your gun? It's a laser gun right, so if I shoot, you can see the laser fire. Right? Conrad, do you really think Vulp is going to see you shooting your gun? He's probably making spears or hunting down coyotes. I don't think you get it Peter, Vulp doesn't have to see it. The NCR has too. When they see it they'll all run back into the camp. Vulp will see this and know that we've been ambushed. Best fucking idea Conrad has ever had. That might just work we need to get into a defensible position. Once they see you shooting they'll go lay. Without a warning Conrad starts shooting into the air with his RCW. His finger never comes off the trigger. After he depleted the energy pack we start hearing yelling from all corners of the camp. Time to fucking run. Jackal hits a full sprint behind the tents. We follow in close pursuit until we see him climbing up into a destroyed building. Conrad boosts me up. Conrad pretty much throws me up to the second story. I turn around and pull him up. Conrad why the fuck would you just start shooting without a warning? Heat of the moment. Look it worked. I look out one of the broken windows of the building to see Vulp jogging down the road with everyone except the egos following closely behind him. We look back at the latrine ditch to see all of the troopers going over the MPs we beat the shit out of. They started spreading out trying to look for us. Some started to move back towards the front of the camp. If they see Vulp coming they'll gun him down before he can even get close. We have to distract them. Jackal takes out his 9mm pistol and loads it. Distract them or shoot at them. At them. Fucking shoot them you little chem head. Conrad loads in another energy pack and aims at the guys approaching the entrance of the camp. Number. We should shoot who is closest to us. Vulp will hit the ones closer to the entrance first. We don't have to worry about them. Conrad nods to me then repositions to another window. I pull out my plasma defender and aim down at one of the men. Kill the officers if you can spot them. We want them disorganized for as long as possible. One of the troopers sees Conrad's RCW barrel poking out of the broken window. 
Before he can say anything he's met with a dozen laser bolts to the chest and abdomen. Like horses being released on a track we begin shooting as fast as our fingers would pull the trigger, or in Conrad's case as fast as the gun could go without overheating the transfusion chamber. Those who weren't hit or killed in the initial first few seconds scattered and ran in random directions. The troopers walking to the entrance wheeled around on their heels and ran to cover when they realized what was happening. It didn't take long for us to either shoot or scare the remaining troopers into cover. How many are left? I wasn't counting I was just shooting. Bang. Jack all falls to the dusty floor of the building with a thud, writhing in pain. Conrad raises up and unloads into the tent where Jack all most likely got shot from. A faint scream of agony can be heard before going silent. I crouch and make my way to Jack Hall. Hit him in and out of his bicep. Stop being a bitch and stop screaming. It's a flesh wound. Stop acting like you haven't been shot before. Between cries of pain Jack Hall raises up and yells in my face I haven't been shot before. Push him down and pull his grip off of me. You're still being a bitch. Before I can duck back into my spot a few shots whiz over my head. Fuck me they really pissed. Conrad what's the 20 on Valp? Conrad raises up for a second then ducks back down. Look for yourself. I move into a corner of the building where I can't be seen from my position by any troopers and barely peek the corner of Conrad's window. Valp had just passed the entrance of the camp. He went from his steady jog into a full out sprint faster than I've ever seen a man run before. Richardson is already past him and in a full banzai run at the first trooper in sight. As Vulp closes in on a group of hiding troopers he, and the recruits, let out a bestial war cry. The troopers don't have enough time to turn around before Vulp is already on top of them, slashing with his machete and stabbing with his rusty barbed spear. We have to make sure the guys over here, I point at the troopers closest to the building, don't get any shots off on Vulp. I look over at Jackal, who is writhing on the ground. I do a perception check to see if he has anything useful on him. Roll an 11. See a bottle of liquor in his pocket. Idea. Take his liquor, tear off a piece of his shirt because fuck him, then stuff it into the bottle. Do you have a lighter? He's in shock. The trooper see Vulp. Fuck me, time to wing it. Shoot the fucking cloth on this thing. What? Shoot the goddamn cloth. I put the cloth over Conrad's RCW barrel. Three shots later it's on fire and spreading fast. Don't even wait to see if anyone is looking at the windows, waiting for us to peek. Turn to the closest one and chuck the bottle down at the corner of the nearest tent as hard as I can. As soon as the bottle smashes against the ground it fucking explodes like a bomb. Half a dozen troopers run out from behind it, covered in fire. More are still behind the tent trying to put out the fire on them. That was no fucking regular liquor. I look back through Conrad's window and see Vulp decapitate a trooper who was trying to scramble to his feet. If the troopers aren't dead they're on fire. If they aren't on fire they're begging for their lives or so badly burned that they can't fight back. Before Vulp can cleave another trooper I stick my head out of Conrad's window and call out to him. Don't kill any more of them. We need to figure some shit out. Vulp gives me a thumbs up then kicks the trooper he was about to cleave in the chest. After a few minutes Vulp and the men are able to save a few of the burning troopers. We drag the still alive MPs out of the latrine ditch. And after checking all the tents we gather all of the still alive troopers against a wall of the destroyed building. Four MPs, beat to all hell. Three uninjured troopers who surrendered. Five hurt or burned troopers. What casualties did we have? Jack all got shot and Richardson chipped a tooth. We spent somewhere around an hour interrogating the soldiers. Apparently an order had been relayed all across the Mojave that NCR troopers were no longer to engage in hostilities with the boss. Instead they were ordered to capture and hold anyone accused of being an enclave agent or an enclave sympathizer. Literally if any player were to even mention us without a hateful tone, a mod would arrest them through NCR MPS and interrogate them. Mods thought that we were trying to persuade neutral players to join us through the PMs, because we didn't say all of our plans in character. If we can't metagame you well just attack everyone who may or may not be on your side. I shit you not, a few of the strip players and one or two of the traveling traders were arrested for not shit talking us in game. They were winning over the people for us. After we got finished figuring out what was happening I conduct we tried deciding on what to do with the NCR prisoners. You said it yourself Peter, the enclave doesn't take prisoners. My character was sitting in a chair deliberating on what we could do with them. Vulp and Conrad were both advocating for their executions, and I wouldn't want to do otherwise. 
But this was no time for destroying your enemies. This was a time for politics and messages. I know you want them to die, I do too. But think about the message we could send to the Mojave if we play this out correctly. Conrad and Volp sit beside me to try and figure out my meaning. The people of the Mojave have taken notice to our actions and are completely associating all of us with the Enclave. Even though among us there is only one true Enclave representative. I pause to draw a square in the dirt with Volp's spear. I cut out a small rectangle where Bonnie Springs and Good Springs would be located. If you don't know by now I plan on killing every powder ganger in Prim so. I make a dotted line around where Prim would be. This is our sphere of influence. They know or will know that we aren't here to slaughter and destroy everything in our path. Mr. New Vegas is a respectable and well-known host. People heed his words with truth and seek him out for knowledge. We've been mentioned once for our good deeds, especially the Enclave has been mentioned. No doubt we've earned some goodwill with the populace, but we need to make the people look to us for protection. Most of all we need to make people see us as heroes. Though I do believe we are heroes of a different caliber, years of lies and propaganda have filled even the deepest ears among the American population with bullshit and villainous fantasy. Luckily the NCR and boss have no clue as to how the true Americans won their power. Outnumbered and afraid, they played to the enemy's advantages without violence, but with politics. We will nurse the prisoners to walking health, then we will send them to the Mojave outpost. While Vulp leaned back trying to take it all in, Conrad moved closer and whispered to me. But why would we do that? It could end badly for anyone we send to escort the prisoners. I smiled and patted Conrad on the shoulder. Thank you for not questioning me openly, it may have set an example of disobedience for the men. I stood to my feet and paced in front of my two companions. No matter what happens, if we go through with my plan, we will win. If our men aren't attacked it will be seen as a metaphorical weakness on the NCRS part. We spared the lives of the NCRS finest and returned them in the best condition we could. Ha, we didn't even torture them. So when they return they will speak of our deadly strategies and brisk operational efficiency. I mean, who else could take an NCR camp without suffering a single fatal casualty? Both Vulp and Conrad were beginning to understand what I was going for. Vulp decided to speak up. What if they do attack our men, and kill them? I only smiled and turned to our ragtag soldiers who were rummaging through the NCRS bags and supplies. While it will be a sacrifice I do not wish to make, it will serve as a truth for the Mojave to behold. We will have extended a hand of mercy and possible peace to the NCR who so readily threatens and incarcerates anyone who doesn't hate us. Our hand will be bitten by the bear and we shall never extend a hand of mercy again, and no one will care if we slaughter a thousand surrendering NCR soldiers. They will have openly refused our kindness and attacked soldiers who came to parley with a gift of goodwill. I paused to take in a breath of the warm evening air. What if they kill our men and mask it with the lie of us attacking first? NCR politicians aren't afraid to lie. I smiled and turned to Vulp. We'll be sending your two youngest recruits, we'll call them cadets. We will see to it that they take twice as long as it should to arrive at the outpost. They will be dressed in the most obvious uniforms possible. I want to make sure that everyone they pass knows who they are and what they're doing. Say the NCR does say that our cadets attacked first. How many potential witnesses would have seen just two young boys guarding injured NCR soldiers? You're too smart for your own good Peter, if you err and careful you'll accidentally become president someday. The three of us laughed heartily, that night we ate, drank, and slept soundly. For four months we had been on the run from the powers in this inhospitable wasteland. This was the most relaxing night in all that time. Now, before I say anything, uh, there's still a big chunk of this story to go. Um, it's just I felt this would be the best place to you know, cut it. So remember to subscribe and click the wee notification bell. The rest of the video will be up tomorrow. So just hold tight. Not long. But like, you know, to make sure you get it, definitely subscribe. You know what I mean? It just makes life a bit easier. Just so it would be a shame to miss the rest of it. Because trust me, it's it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be spicy. It's going to get really fucking spicy. So. But uh, no, um, end of the story itself. You know... Especially with, like, you know, especially with the new Fallout just out, it's a little shame, you know, and I think a lot of people are craving them, the Fallout, like, you know, stories, like, you know, that fit the universe, and I think, like, you know, that's why this one did so well, and um, the Star Wars one, because, like, you know, people still love Star Wars, and people still love Fallout, it's just, they hate what 
the writers are doing to it, you know? And I feel like a lot of the time, like these role-playing write-ups and fan fiction and stuff, they're the dedicated, you know, little serious fans, you know? And they, I think most of the time, fans don't really know what they want, but I think these guys do know and they understand how the universe works. And I think that's what makes the story so good. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Or am I just talking out of my hole? God knows. I don't know. But look... Um, I think it's a great story so far, and I'm really enjoying our band of Enclave Misfits, to be honest with you. And I love, you know, I love a genuine, really good role player being able to outmaneuver and, you know, just make people look like dicks. You know what I mean? I, I just I just love that shit. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, this story, I think, is outstanding. Really getting into it. But as I say, the rest will be out tomorrow, and I've kept you here long enough, so look. I uh, hope you enjoy. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this, this is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?